Every time a new survival horror game comes out, it's like a holiday for me. If there's anything that you should know about me, it's that I absolutely love survival horror video games. But with that being said, the Alone in the Dark franchise is a series of games that has completely eluded me. I've never played an Alone in the Dark game before. And when I saw the trailers for this new one a while ago now, it piqued my curiosity. I was immediately intrigued. It's a game right up my alley. And that game finally came out late last night or early this morning, however you want to look at it. And I've been playing it. I've been playing it a lot and I have a lot of thoughts I want to share with you guys. So I'm going to review the game. I'm going to show you some raw gameplay, but before I do that, you should definitely hit that subscribe button. I talk about video games all the time on this page and I always love to give survival horror games a little extra attention. It's my favorite genre ever, but I also talk about movies and TV shows. But with that being said, Let's talk about Alone in the Dark. First things first, this is a first impressions review. I do have a good chunk of hours into this game, but I have not beaten it yet. And also I will talk about the story a little bit in this review, but I will avoid any spoilers and all of the gameplay footage that you're seeing is from very early on in the game. So what is Alone in the Dark if you don't already know? It's a story driven third person survival horror game. And like most games in this genre, you'll fight monsters, you'll solve puzzles, and you'll explore creepy locations. Now I'm going to break this review up into two parts, what I like and what I don't like. First, I'm going to talk about the things that I like about Alone in the Dark. First off is the story. This is very much a story driven game. Again, I'm not going to get into spoilers, but the story follows Jodie Cormer's character and she's traveling to a creepy mansion in the Southern United States to find her uncle who is missing. And she hires David Harbour's character, who is a private investigator to accompany and assist her. And at the very start of the game, you choose who you want want to play as and I wasn't expecting this I was expecting it to bounce back and forth between the characters within one playthrough kind of like Alan Wake but I actually like that you have to commit to one character or the other it's wicked old school kind of like the OG Resident Evil games and it'll make a second playthrough even more warranted I chose to play as David Harbour's character first because Jodie Cormer's character seemed to be more directly connected to the narrative so I wanted to save bigger plot points for my second playthrough but anyway the story story has you doing detective work, fighting monsters, and swapping back and forth between realities. It's very much a detective noir mixed up with a psychological horror, and then all of that is shaken up and served to you with a healthy dose of Lovecraftian cosmic horror. And all of this stuff just works so well together. And again, no spoilers, but the story keeps evolving in a way that it never got boring, and there's a lot of cool and interesting side characters and plot points that keep things going. Now I'm going to talk about what I I liked in terms of the gameplay. Let's start with puzzles. This has such an old school approach to puzzle solving. A lot of newer survival horror games, even the best ones, have very simplistic and streamlined puzzles where it doesn't really feel like you're using your brain much at all. But this game at times feels very much like you're playing through one giant escape room, which I know that's something I just said about the recent Outlast trials, but this game is like a longer, more thoughtful, more interconnected and well laid out escape room in a lot of ways. And the puzzles have multiple layers, which I really, really like. You could find a physical puzzle somewhere, which will have you reference a note that you found a while ago. And that note might have you seek out a different location, which might have another small puzzle there. I found myself really liking that gameplay loop in terms of the puzzles and how deep and well layered they were. But I also wonder if it might get old come my second playthrough. And I don't dislike puzzles puzzles in my survival horror games, but I don't usually like when they are overdone. And this may be considered overdone to some people, but I think it actually works well with the narrative in the world that they set up. Now let's talk about the exploration. Exploration feels old school also. You actually have to reference your map several times when just walking around, at least I did. Again, where some newer survival horror games, they have a map, but they also have other features that make your map completely useless. So it just reminds me of playing the old school Resident Evil games on the PlayStation 1 or the PlayStation 2 where I'll walk into a room and then I'll look at my map and then I'll walk into another room and I'll look at my map and then I'll find a key and then I have to reference my map to see where that key goes or where I think that key might go. It's just something that a lot of newer survival horror games don't really do. It's so streamlined these days in a lot of games and I just love the old school approach to a lot of aspects with this game. And so far from what I've experienced it feels like a nice 
nice balance between all the main aspects of gameplay. You're never doing puzzles for too long before the game has you go explore a new area instead. And while you're exploring, it never lets you do that too long without a new story beat or without some combat thrown at you. Now, speaking of combat, it's time to get into some of the negative aspects with Alone in the Dark. The first being the combat. Neither the shooting or the melee combat feels great. It feels very clunky and awkward. And I actually think that survival horror games a lot of the time have some leniency when it comes to clunky combat. A lot of the time it can add to the tension in the atmosphere, at least in my opinion. But in this game, it just feels stale. Shooting is all right for the most part, but melee combat is pretty bad. And the overall performance of this game can be dodgy too. Character models often look weird. A lot of stuttering. The camera moves in an unappealing way sometimes. Hit detection works fine mostly, but there will often be times you know a bullet should have connected with an enemy, but it just didn't for some reason. Your character will sometimes get stuck on random stuff or stuck on nothing. Once my character just got stuck on a small wooden box and couldn't move, I had to reset the game. You're just often reminded that this is not a AAA game. It doesn't have the polish of something like Alan Wake 2 or the Resident Evil games. This is very much a double A experience, but still, it's a well put together, carefully crafted double A experience for the most part. And all of those technical flaws didn't really detract much from the game in my opinion, and I don't think they are bad enough to hold off on this game until it gets some patches if you're already planning on buying it. Now I'm going to get into my concluding thoughts. I'm enjoying this game just fine. Again, the puzzle solving aspect is more engaging than I was expecting. The story is there, and there's a lot of story to be told, but I'm not personally in love with the story. It's far from from the selling point in my opinion, but that's just a personal preference thing. Period piece noir stuff is a hard sell for me. But I'm sure if you're into this type of narrative, you'll eat this up and you'll probably end up loving this game more than me. Now, who can I recommend this game to? If you're a survival horror fan like me and you like to play any one you can get your hands on, this game is well worth the price of admission. It won't be the most memorable survival horror game you've played, especially in recent years, but it has a lot of old school charm and its own unique identity to earn a proud spot in your survival horror collection. But if you're not into survival horror, I don't think this will be a game for you, where again, games like Alan Wake 2 and Resident Evil 4 Remake, they have a lot of elements that can appeal to a lot of different gaming fans. But I don't think Alone in the Dark is technically a good enough game to impress anyone that's not already in love with this specific genre. Unless maybe you love old school school detective shit. Maybe you'll like it then. But anyway, that's my quick and brief first impressions with the new Alone in the Dark game after playing it for a good handful of hours. Depending on how this video performs, I will absolutely make a follow-up video once I beat the game, which will be very, very soon because I am excited to return to it. I'm excited to play through the second campaign. Have you played this game yet? If you have, what are you thinking about it? Let me know in the comments. If you haven't played it, let me know. Do you plan to play it? Are you going to buy it soon? Are you going to wait for a sale? Or are are you going to ignore the game completely? Let me know if that's the case too. But anyway, once again, consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching, especially if you watched this far. Ah!